The Tokyo Electric Power Company says it has detected higher than normal levels of radioactive substances in the water of the spent fuel storage pool at the number four reactor of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. TEPCO says the levels suggest that some of the spent fuel has been damaged, but most of it has not. TEPCO measured the water temperature in the spent fuel storage pool on Tuesday using an extending arm on a special vehicle. It found that the temperature had risen to about 90 degrees Celsius. That's more than 50 degrees higher than the normal level. The company sprayed water to cool the fuel. It also analyzed samples taken from the pool water to determine whether the fuel has been damaged. TEPCO said on Wednesday that it found 220 becquerels of iodine-131 per cubic centimeter of water, as well as 88 becquerels of cesium-134 and 93 becquerels of cesium-137. The firm says the radioactive materials are usually produced by nuclear fission. The levels of radioactive substances in the storage pool are higher than those under normal circumstances. However, the figures themselves are not so high. Some of the fuel in the storage pool is likely to have been damaged, but the measured levels suggest that most of the fuel is undamaged. We will conduct a more detailed examination. On Tuesday, high levels of radiation measuring 84 millisieverts per hour were detected above the water surface of the storage pool. TEPCO says it will examine the relationship between the high radiation and radioactive substances and also try to find out if there, are any, if there are any other factors that could have raised the radiation level above the water's surface. Japan's science ministry says it has found record radiation levels in seawater near the Fukushima power plant. It says samples taken about 30 kilometers east of the plant showed the highest levels since monitoring began about three weeks ago. The ministry found 88.5 becquerels of iodine-131 per liter of seawater in a sample taken on Monday. The figure is more than twice the government's upper limit for wastewater from nuclear facilities. The level of cesium-137 was also the highest observed so far, but was below the limit. The government's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says radioactive substances seem to be flowing out and diffusing northward. The agency says predicting the course of the flow is difficult. It says it will step up monitoring in locations where high radiation levels have been detected. Small amounts of radioactive strontium have been detected in soil and plants outside the 30-kilometer zone from the Fukushima plant. Strontium could cause cancer, but the science ministry says the amount is extremely low and does not pose a health risk. The ministry found 3.3 to 32 becquerels of strontium-90 per kilogram of soil in samples taken at three sites in Namie Town and Itate Village, over 30 kilometers from the plant. An extremely small amount of strontium was also found in plants taken from four other areas 40 to 80 kilometers from the plant. Strontium-90 has a half-life of 29 years. It accumulates in bones and can cause cancer. The ministry says the amount found is extremely low and would not have a negative health impact even if a person ingested one kilogram of the contaminated soil. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yukio Edano says there will be no change in the way the crisis at the troubled Fukushima power plant is being handled. Edano on Tuesday held his first news conference for the international media since the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. Most questions focus on the government's decision to raise the severity level at the troubled plant from 5 to 7. Edano stressed that raising the crisis level does not mean the situation is worsening. The upgrade was not due to a new emergency. It is based on the latest analysis of data for the international nuclear event scale. A correspondent for a British magazine, The Economist, said Japanese politicians should have made more media appearances immediately after the disaster. He also commented on the raising of the crisis level. People around the world should not freak out because the new rating is number seven. It's still a problem. It's still being addressed. The world should be happy that it's happening in Japan, which is a first world com country with great disclosure. 
Workers at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have finished one stage of a planned transfer of highly radioactive water from parts of the facility. The highly contaminated water needs to be moved to the plant's waste processing facility from this basement of the number two reactor's turbine building. Only then will workers be able to continue efforts to restore the cooling system. On Wednesday, workers checked the waste processing facility to make sure they could hold the contaminated water they wanted to transfer. That evening, they transferred 700 tons of contaminated water from an underground utility tunnel outside the number two reactor to a turbine condenser. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, says the water level in the tunnel dropped eight centimeters from the previous day. It had been close to one meter below the surface of the ground. Another challenge is how to stop the spread of radioactive material in the Pacific Ocean. Seawater sampled on Monday 30 kilometers offshore contained 2.2 times the national safety limit of radioactive iodine-131. The level 15 kilometers offshore was 23 times the safety limit. Both figures are the highest yet observed in those areas. On Wednesday, workers put up barriers in the sea near the water intakes for the number two, three, and four reactors. The barriers will be reinforced in the coming days. Um, talk about exactly, I mean, as a physicist, to explain to people exactly what has taken place in Japan at these nuclear power plants. Think of driving a car and the car all of a sudden lunges out of control. You hit the brakes. The brakes don't work. That's because the earthquake wiped out the safety systems in the first minutes of the earthquake and tsunami. Then your radiator starts to heat up and explodes. That's the hydrogen gas explosion. And then to make it worse, the gas tank is heating up and all of a sudden your whole car is going to be in flames. That's the full-scale meltdown. So what do you do? You drive the car into a river. That's what the utility did by putting seawater, seawater from the Pacific Ocean in a desperate attempt to keep water on top of the core. But then seawater has salt in it, and that gums up your radiator. And so what do you do? You call out the local firemen. And so now you have these Japanese samurai warriors. They know that this is potentially a suicide mission. They're coming in with hose water hose water trying to keep water over the melted nuclear re reactor cores. So that's the situation now. So when the utility says that things are stable, it's only stable in the sense that you're dangling from a cliff, hanging by your fingernails, and as the time goes by, each fingernail starts to crack. That's the situation now. Well, the president of the Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the Fukushima plant, has apologized for the trouble caused by the accident. President Masataka Shimizu held a news conference a short while ago. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt sympathy to the people who were affected by the earthquake and disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Radioactive materials have been released due to a severe accident and to the residents in the area surrounding the power plant as well as residents in Fukushima Prefecture, also to our customers and shareholders. I regret the fact that we are inconveniencing all these people and also that we have con caused great concerns. I would like to take this opportunity to ap deeply apologize. Shimizu said TEPCO is working with the government on the payment of compensation to residents living around the plant. TEPCO's president also said he is stepping down as the head of the Federation of Electric Power Companies of Japan. Uh, Tokyo Electric has been in denial trying to downplay the full impact of this nuclear accident.